Denying someone their freedom is the same thing as slavery, imperialism, and evil ambitions of dominating others. When the battle in Ukraine had been going on for a year, these are the words that came out of the mouth of the Polish president Andrzej Duda. As is well known, Poland was an important supporter of Kyiv from the very first days of the Ukrainian war. Due to the fact that Warsaw suffered the same fate as Kyiv in history, Poland took its place on the side of Ukraine without any hesitance. At the beginning of the war, the brave hearts of Poland threw themselves into the Ukrainian front lines. The Ukrainian conflict is home to a large number of volunteer troops. And among those volunteer fighters, Polish soldiers hold an extremely significant position. Let's take a look at how the Polish volunteers contributed to the turning point in the conflict between Russia and Ukraine, as well as the consequences those volunteers had. While groups of seemingly determined little men were heading in the opposite direction to fight the Russians, most appeared to be Ukrainian immigrants in their 20s and 30s, however, some could be heard speaking other languages. Most of them had black tactical boots dangling from their gym bags. These soldiers answered the call of supporters of peace and democracy and joined the worldwide Ukrainian Regional Defense Legion's new brigade, and they assisted in the struggle against the Russians. These included Poles that compared Russia's invasion of Ukraine to the Soviet Union's brutal invasion of Poland in October. Vladimir Rogov, head of the We Are Together with Russia movement, said that approximately 5,000 soldiers were in the battle line in Zaporizhia. Rogov pointed out that many Polish-speaking citizens are being treated in some hospitals, especially in the Kyiv controversy region. Vladimir Putin was taken aback by the success of the volunteer soldiers. When combined with the strength of the Kyiv army, this success created an effect similar to a cold shower for Putin. In addition, Russians who disagree with Vladimir Putin's decision to wage war are fighting on the side of Ukraine. Polish and Russian volunteers who are currently fighting for Ukraine will conduct joint combat operations. This cooperation was announced by the Polish Volunteer Union and the Russian Volunteer Union. Soldiers from both formations are currently engaging in joint training and coordination. It is likely that Polish and Russian volunteers will be involved in the operations of the Defense Intelligence of the Ministry of Defense of Ukraine. Previously, Ukrainian intelligence personnel have collaborated with their counterparts in Belarus and Russia to carry out joint operations. There are an increasing number of people from other countries who are willing to provide their private assistance to Ukraine in its fight against the aggression of the Kremlin. The number of volunteers is so big that volunteer organizations are being created on a national basis from them. The Polish Volunteer Union has its own material and tactical basis and symbols. Their symbol is the emblem of the Cavalry of Death Cavalry Squadron, which the Poles formed in 1920 to fight against the Bolsheviks. In contrast, the Russian Volunteer Corps was created in 2022 from Russians who wanted to fight on the Ukrainian side. In the previous week, soldiers on the Russian Volunteer Corps reported that they conducted an operation on the territory of Bryan's region of Ukraine. Polish volunteer Damian Duda tells what inspired him to sacrifice his life to support troops fighting against Russia in the Solidar newspaper. Duda and the crack squad of volunteers were untouched by the brutality at the front. It has been going on for weeks as Russia declared victory in Solidar in eastern Ukraine and Ukraine insisted the war was still not over despite being one of the most dangerous places on the planet right now. Few volunteers still feel compelled to travel there and help out as much as they can. Duda is one of the team of five that went to help out as much as they could. Duda states that this war is not just Ukraine's war. It is a war between the civilization of death and the civilization of life. The team led by Duda works as volunteer paramedics for Solidar. The team picks up wounded troops on the front line, stabilizes their condition, transfers them to safety in a special armored vehicle, and then delivers the wounded to a hospital. On the other hand, the team also picks up civilians who have been injured in the conflict and carries them to a medical facility. Duda, who arrived in eastern Ukraine for the first time in 2014, is used to the dangers that come with volunteer work in hostile environments. At the time, 
there was extensive Russian propaganda in Poland, and Duda wanted to check for himself whether or not there truly were Nazis in Ukraine. On the contrary, I saw the separatists were members of the Russian army. Duda then returned to Poland and gathered a team of volunteers. Then he came to Ukraine to provide frontline medical assistance when the total invasion started. Duda and his volunteer friends took their backpacks and got into their vehicles. Although the assistance provided by the Polish volunteers is unquestionably extremely essential, it is impossible to disregard the significance of the support provided by the Warsaw government in its capacity as a frontline state. Due to Poland's geographical position along the border with Ukraine and Belarus, the country has played an essential part ever since Russia started amassing soldiers on the Ukrainian border in preparation for the invasion. When Russian tanks invaded Ukraine on February 24, 2022, Poland opened its borders to millions of Ukrainians fleeing their country, and ordinary Poles lined up to welcome refugees at their homes, like they do in the Baltic states. Poland has since become an important route for Western supplies to reach Ukraine, and a safe haven for Ukrainian refugees. As a result of the European Union and NATO deploying significant amounts of armaments, Poland emerged very fast as a crucial defender of Ukraine's cause. Because of its size, location, and infrastructure, Poland is the West's most important gateway to Ukraine. As a result, Poland has become the primary transit country for international aid. In addition, Poland has been leading lobbying efforts to impose severe sanctions against Russia and support Ukraine with strong political, economic, and military assistance. Polish leaders were among the first to arrive in Kyiv as artillery still bombarded the city, and the country supports Ukraine's earliest session to the European Union as it is known. The country formed a tank coalition shortly after the war started in with the participation of various countries, and the coalition expanded the support for Ukraine. Poland has donated significant military aid to Ukraine, including the main channel of military supply and 300 tanks from its own stockpiles. When it comes to current tank technology, Poland was the first Western ally to provide Ukraine with Leopard tanks. Ukraine has received the remaining 10 of the 14 Leopard 2 tanks that Poland had promised, and Ukrainian soldiers have finished their training to operate this equipment. In summary, it is will. It is the energy that Poland strongly believes it has to do with everything possible to support Ukraine, to achieve what Ukraine defines as victory, and Ukraine is willing to expand it to achieve it. We will wait and see how the support of freedom fighters who reject slavery and the enslavement of others will affect the situation.